So from uh, attendees, all my, all our students only, sir. Uh, yes, madam. Okay. All our students from Bapatla Engineering College and Bapatla Women's Engineering College. Oh, it is also uh, anything associated with Bapatla Engineering College? No, madam. Ba only ourselves we are doing only, ma'am, with, without having any association. And the women's college is linked to Bapatla Engineering College, sir? Yes, madam. That is also one of the organizations working from our same society, Bapatla Education Society. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, sir. No, Chapman, sir. Please start the program, sir. Now the time is uh, 4 o'clock. Okay, sir. Good evening to all participants. On the occasion of 136th birthday anniversary celebrations of Sri Srinivas Ramanujan, our department is conducting a one-week international workshop on enhancing computational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering. ECS MVFE 23 from 18th to 23rd December 2023. Yesterday, Dr. L. Jagannathan Sir, Professor, School of Computer Science and Engineering, Velur Institute of Technology, Chennai, delivered a talk on support vector machine A classifier. More than 900 participants attended yesterday's session. Thank you one and all for your valuable participation in yesterday's session. I request our beloved head of the department of mathematics, Babatla Engineering College, Dr. Kevilan Achar Ligaru, to address the gathering for today's session. Sir, uh, good, evening. Uh, good evening to all. Uh, respected revered resource person, Dr. P. Nagarani, madam my esteemed faculty members and dear beloved students. We are all gathered here through virtual mode in the second day of our international workshop on enhancing computation skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering. All of us know that computational skills of mathematics along with the conceptual approaches definitely enrich the students for enhancing their knowledge in multifarious fields. In addition to it, it also helps to update existing knowledge in students' community and create a deeper interest in various fields of mathematics. Yesterday, the first session was enriched with the valuable lecture by our eminent professor, Dr. Yal Jagannathan sir, on support vector machine A classifier. I appreciate all our students for their active participation and interest towards enhancing their knowledge. Today, our resource person is Dr. P. Nagarani, Madam, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, the University of West Indies, Jamaica. Madam did commendable research on fluid dynamics under the able guidance of Professor G. Saroja Magaru from Sri Padmavati Women's University, Tirupati. I am sure that her ability not only captivated the attention of our students, but also deepened students' understanding of mathematical models in engineering. Definitely, her knowledge has to show significant impact on our students. Hence, I feel privileged to have such a good resource person today with us in this section. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Finally, it's my pleasure. I appreciate all our students for their continued enthusiasm and dedication. I am sure that today's section will be a fruitful one with a learning experience, both enjoyable and enlightening. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable message. Today is the second day in our one-week online international workshop. Today's speaker is Dr. P. Nagarani Garu, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, Jamaica, West Indies. Now, I request one of our staff organizers, Mrs. Nag N. K. Nagamani, to present profound profile of Dr. P. Nagarani Garu. Good evening all. Welcome you all to a, a one-week online international workshop on enhancing combinational skills of mathematics in various fields of engineering. It's my privilege to introduce today's resource person, Dr. P. Nagarani Garu. Dr. P. Nagarani Madam is a associate professor in mathematics, specializing in applied mathematics at the University of the West Indies, Ona Campus, Jamaica, West Indies. She also served as a 
head of the department for the last 6 years from 2017 to 2023 she did her bsc from acharya nagarjuna university msc mphil and phd degrees in applied mathematics from sri padmavati mahila university tirupati ap india she is a recipient of several awards and medals for her excellence in her education at uwi besides her teaching she has introduced several programs and several un- undergraduate and graduate courses she has guided many students at master level guided several mphil and phd students and also visited uh, several institutions around the globe she has published uh, more than 30 research articles in international journals as a teacher she has received uh, awards for outstanding achievement in teaching from uwi several times and also received awards for her publications she is a member of several scientific societies including the carbian academy of sciences the indian society of theoretical and applied mechanics and the pradesh society of mathematical sciences she is a visiting professor for several universities she also serves as a reviewer for several journals in her area of specialization besides all these activities she actively participates in various activities especially for girl education she is also very active in alma matters and has been greatly contributing to the school where he studied and her village dr nagarani madam is appreciated by one and all with her best way of teaching for the last 2 to 3 decades she designed and introduced several programs various undergraduate and graduate courses she, she contribute uh, to department as well as university in various roles is outstanding her helping nature inspiring character teaching abilities research capabilities service to the society are additional qualities in her apart from her goodness and vivid experience in the field of education thank you all thank you, thank you so much madam for your kind words Thank you, Mrs. Nagamani, for your nice introduction about Dr. P. Nagarani Garu. Now I hand over the session to Dr. P. Nagarani Garu. Madam, please. Okay, sir. How much time I'll be having? Um, I can take one hour forty-five or, or one, one and a half hour. Actually, the session is from four to six, madam. We can continue up yeah. to four, five thirty or five forty. And after that, we will have question and answer session. Five thirty or five. Thank you so much. Thank you. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me. It's my pleasure to be here because always it is good to be one among our people. So that is always makes thank us you, to feel you. good. And you know that time here is nine five thirty now in the morning. So even with this time, I feel so good because. i am always connected to back to where i came from and i love to visit uh, personally but i didn't want okay. to miss even though it is a virtually i don't want to miss but i am missing to see the faces of students so really it's good to see you know what we are doing what how they are feeling but i am hoping in another visit i'll see you all of you if you are there or otherwise you are juniors and seniors thank you so much sir for inviting me it's so good to see and i'm hoping that uh, i can give something to our students because especially as we all see the importance of mathematics that we raise we realize and the present generation is not realizing so it is so good that you are organizing i appreciate your effort and also our students should be appreciating your effort because this is one such thing that they need to know especially when do when they are doing engineering so i taught in engineering college before i come here so they wanted to learn the techniques not the maths background which is something that is missing there but when you come back and when they come back to work in their field but nowadays everybody is going to software that is different so but when they are doing in their field when they wanted to construct a model it is very essential to have maths knowledge so i am sure that they will be going to be appreciate the beauty of maths the background that they needed in mathematical modeling 
Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I may not be, yeah. And let me see if you are all seeing, please. So can you see me? Can you see my screen presentation, please? Not yet, madam. Is it coming? Just now it came, madam. Okay, sir. So I can audible, sir, clearly? Yes. Okay. So if anything is there, please, just in between also, you can raise the point. But I'm happy to answer. I try my best to give Definitely. the submodels in, uh, um, in engineering. So again, once again, good afternoon to you all. I'm very happy to be here. You can, and you can increase, I'm, uh, I'm, Madam, you can increase yeah. voice a little bit. Okay, sir. Now you can check, sir. You can check uh, now. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, all. Again. So today's my topic is mathematical models in engineering. And you see, as your title of this workshop is uh, Enhancing Computational Skills of Mathematics in Various Fields of Engineering. I also, what I did was uh, based on your um, topic, I'm going to show a lot of examples where you will be needing not only the in terms of mathematical analysis, but also you will be needing knowledge of computational skills that I, I try my best. But if any have any questions, please type in the chat. I'm sure you can type. Or, uh, okay, you can write an email to me later. So my email is here. So let us see the mathematics models in engineering. Okay, what is mathematical modeling? You know that. So in general, in reality, we have a several process we observe and several situations we observe. But sometimes it's very difficult to get the experimental work done or otherwise get an assumptions based on the observations. So we come to write them in terms of some symbols, some formulas, and we express the real phenomenon in terms of the mathematics. That is where it comes to as a modeling. <clears throat> so what we do is uh, to better understand our world, we describe a particular phenomenon mathematically. As you see that, okay, when you are writing a real situation, whether you are working in any, any branch of engineering, I didn't ask you uh, in which branches you have, but you might have come across the several situations in engineering where you must be writing the equations. So you always know that when you are writing a mathematical model, you will be assuming a lot of uh, uh, constraints, our conditions. So those assumptions and make you sometimes may not be realistic because sometimes in order to evaluate, okay, in terms of mathematics, we make some assumptions. Therefore, you always know that the mathematical model that you are working on, that you are seeing, which is not exactly accurate, okay, but, it, but you know that we try optimality to a certain extent. But you must be seeing, uh, okay, uh, term simulation also. But you see, sometimes this uh, modeling and simulations are used, uh, okay, as a synonym. But normally, when it comes to simulation, what we do is when you have a model, so simulation, we use it is the process of using a model to study the behavior and performance of an actual or theoretical system. You can see that in simulations. What we do is, okay, we use these existing models, our proposed character system, system. What exactly we do with the knowledge that you gain from the model, you study the variations of the different variables and you just manipulate them. Or also you come up with the prototype for future, you know, by adding certain elements so that you do the analysis. And also we do optimize the system performance, okay, by our... Uh, by adjusting the parameters, that is what you do in the simulation. Okay, so when you are doing mathematical modeling, basically when you see in engineering, mostly you will be seeing a lot of directly models. Okay, you will be given an equation maybe asked to solve, 
or maybe you will be asked that you know this model okay you this method of solution you will apply and then you are interpreting in terms of your okay experiment that you are doing or in relate to the field that you are doing but when it comes to mathematical modeling so you must understand that uh, so there are certain very important elements of modeling that are very crucial in coming up a mathematical model or else in terms of simulation so generally the very crucial uh, phases or elements is how do you identify okay a model and in terms of when you identify how do you write them in terms of the mathematical symbols so identification of a problem is very very important try to understand that when you are a, a mathematician say for example you are a, an applied mathematician working on some particular problem see i am a mathematician but i am uh, uh, i do work on several mathematical models in various fields so being a mathematical uh, modeler working in biomechanics i need to talk to different people so i need to go to sometimes doctors engineers and all so therefore at the stage of identification and assumptions it's not one person you know normally when it comes to a long, big scale it is the involvement of several people where you gather and discuss and come up with a formulation so this is a very crucial depending upon the field that you are doing so whether you are in a engineering or any science department so you must be communicating and working with several people who has the knowledge of this so the identification is crucial that means you are identifying the problem what is this problem that i am working on and uh, what are the constraints i need to be considering what are the conditions that is influencing sometimes you know in order to model you know that you need to get some data to be consider for several years also so this is a very crucial stage not only putting into the form of equation sometimes you may be have to have a lot of statistical data okay in order to set up in order to set up an experiment also you need to be you know um involving lot of people so crucial so identification is very crucial and then you will be assuming okay uh, what are the factors must be consider what are the assumptions i am making is it realistic to assume those are the very important elements in mathematical modeling so now it's a construction or formulation but this is the stage where uh, mathematicians are involved and uh, mostly you will be learning lot of mathematics right so so you must be seeing you will be seeing some uh, directly solve this differential equation you know subjected to these conditions that is where you are seeing the formulation okay so in terms of formulation what we do all this physical um, phenomenon that you observed you put them in terms of mathematics that's called mathematical language so you have uh, not only the governing equations or the model that you have sometimes you may have a lot of constraints all these you write in terms of symbols and that is what you call the formulation next stage is we will be going to the method of solution that is where uh, now you have a problem now you will be analyzing this problem and you will find the suitable methods we will discuss you know the importance of other methods and advanced methods while we are going for some models so this is very uh, important you will be having a knowledge of certain solutions and uh, even about the mathematical analysis and also see um this is very important here also as i said um method of solution it's not simply you are going to solve mostly i know i taught in engineering colleges so basically we will be applying some methods for, for example you are applying a numerical method in order to solve a situations but having a knowledge of okay mathematical analysis that is in terms of existence and uniqueness of solutions and those are very crucial so when you are working a problem and at the end you realize that there is no solution for that problem so you are going to completely waste all the years of setup you know what is what you are doing so it's a very very important having a, a mathematical knowledge even when you are applying certain numerical techniques where you will be going as an algorithm you will be learning but it is very crucial to know the existence and uniqueness theorems whether you have a solution or not 
and behavior of the solutions that information is very very important so you have now a solved a problem and now you have a you obtained a solution now you know that okay i got an a velocity expression and i got uh, okay um uh, uh, what is unknown i got so then in reality what we do is we interpret them okay so interpretation is the next stage so that is the solution to the mathematical problem must be compared with the real world problem to see if the solution makes sense if not check the initial assumptions this is very 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 important you know uh, interpretation and validation because once this model you verify with the experimental result in terms of the validation what you do is in the in interpretation and validation so you'll see the behavior of the solutions if they are not behaving as you are expecting you need to go back to original stage where you have started that is in the formulation itself and then you have to work back and come back to this stage and validation is also very very important this is where most of what engineers do you validate this model what you did with the existing experimental work and there in order to construct a, a prototype or with the advanced model where you add up another extra constraint in reality in maths or extra equation in maths but in reality you are adding another component to your experiment so that is how the simulation helps so validation is very 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 important so you will be validating here in terms of the real world data and if it is validated properly and if you are satisfied with what you got and then you move on to the implementation stage so the implementation stage normally you don't need you know a mathematician to be involved because it's already you have a prototype model even nowadays you see um in computers there are so many programs are constructed and you will be giving to somebody who has no knowledge of you know um programming okay what you call development and then you will be giving to somebody who is just simply sitting and operating the data that is what exactly the implementation stage so those models can be you know applied to real world suppose if you are working on an optimization problem so all the data was given and they have to simply change the variables so those are very 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 crucial so in terms of if i have to generalize the basis of mathematical modeling okay identifying formulation method of solution validation and implementation these are very 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 important that is how we approach a model in real world okay when you are working with models so you need to understand you know what models you are working and based on the model sometimes you have to um your theory is going to be different and your analysis methods are going to be different so when you are apply when you are working on some models you must be seeing sometimes the word linear versus non linear as you know but uh, by now you have lot of uh, idea what are linear problems and non linear problems so linear problems you expect that your mathematical constraints equations okay those are in terms of linear terms and non linearity whenever it is not linear you will be seeing non linearity in general okay solving linear problems are a little comfortable than non linearity so for non linearity so you need to be applying different methods so i'm sure that uh, you come across some linearity non linearity problems in your study okay also you classify them as dynamic and static okay the dynamic problems you know accounts the change in terms of the time but when it comes to static you don't look at it the time so for example what is the example you can give anything suppose you are constructing a building okay so when it comes to static static models you don't think about future with no time you just think today what is the cost what is the material and all those as a static example when you think about dynamic what happens tomorrow okay in terms of protecting from rain what has to be done in protecting from climate what has to be done all those in terms of engineering problems comes as a dynamic so you will be having problems that involves uh, with time or without a time also we classify them based on models okay in terms of how they have involved okay explicit versus implicit um, you as you know 
explicit is you will be seeing your unknowns directly like if you have a y equal to mx plus c y is your unknown explicit expression you must have seen that similarly y is my unknown but you have a y square plus okay cos y plus something you can see that those are not explicitly okay given as an expression similarly that in reality also when you are solving problem sometimes you solve be directly an explicit function say if your unknown is uh, um k k equal to something but in other wise in other cases you may be you may be getting the a solution solving k square plus x square plus something from that you will get a explicit expression so you classify the models explicit and implicit okay and also we will be um classifying the models as discrete versus continuous you know that a discrete model treats the objects as discrete such as particles uh, in a molecular model or states in statistical model okay but basically you know in a continuous models you will be treating that your variables are continuously varying okay so that uh, you will be analyzing that if you have given an expression okay in terms of uh, t you will be assuming that okay this t generalizes the values for any value of t that you have given okay but in a discrete value on the real line okay in terms of mathematics but if you have a discrete models normally you expect the data will be given at say for example on the real line x equal to 1 x equal to 2 x equal to 3 okay all those discrete data will be given mostly the differential equations we mostly i'll be seeing in engineering in lot of uh, problems so the models that we work are continuous models because of the how you assume your function y of t is continuous in the differential equation so you will be working on continuous models but when you are dealing the models numerically what happens when you are uh, writing a program numerically though you solve a continuous problem but in one point in time you are writing those uh, continuous equation in terms of the difference equations if you remember so the difference equations are discrete models so they give you the data for different different points but uh, okay at the end again you generate the continuous data in terms of some software okay or the curve fitting that you are doing so that you are generating the continuous data so those are the okay discrete versus continuous similarly you will be classifying based on the models deterministic versus probabilistic okay mostly the deterministic model includes no randomness that means you expect something varying with time means with the initial conditions you have taken so you expect that the problem you do several times with the same initial conditions you expect that it is not changing but probabilistic model you cannot expect anything means it can change you know you uh, apply this model tomorrow at the same time so your uh, randomness comes your everything okay changes there so these are the models okay it is very very essential to know that which model you are doing what is the type of model you are doing okay so i'm moving towards you know some advanced models that we use in terms of differential equations before that i want to give you some uh, some of the models that you must be come across by now so that you will appreciate the beauty of those models um so that that you are doing in now are some of them are leading to the advanced mathematical models in several engineering um areas okay modeling with differential equations i'm completely moving to continuous models and discrete models and you will be seeing okay uh, mathematical modeling with differential equations so when you uh, talk about the differential equations in reality in real life so you have a situation but in the in those situations when you solve them in you know that you need some conditions given whether it could be initial conditions or boundary conditions so as i said here also the um theoretical aspects of mathematics is very essential because you should have the idea of the existence of solutions that is very essential um so when you have a conditions given at a one point which is initially you know that that's a initial value problem so i have given here 
a simple second order equation okay subjected to initial conditions so uh, no sorry it should be oh sorry it should be y y y at a please okay y dash at a equal to b shouldn't be y double dash sorry for that y at a is a y dash at a equal to b one extra dash to be removed please okay um so this is an example of a initial value problem and similarly you must be come across the boundary value problems sometimes you will be come across the, okay both the initial conditions and okay boundary conditions are given okay so i am not going to completely deriving and uh, okay giving some derivations of equations but i want to focus more on applied side so that you will see realize you know the importance of mathematics but if you really want you know certain uh, processes that to be derived i'm happy to do so later but you see some problems that you come across in uh, engineering okay um so i try to give the references with the way the books i have taken so that you can also look at into this model actually this model you see basically if you see uh, this um, initial value problem you must be seeing in several models especially in vibrating strings okay mechanical vibrations right simple pendulum models all that you will must be seeing this model initial value problem okay so when uh, uh, this is an example where you can see okay you have a, a mass is attached to a, a spring and that is extended and you are uh, trying to understand the motion of that string okay so that equation is governed by here okay in terms of the initial value problem okay i gave a, a simple examples also you can verify later so this describes a simple problem the initial value problem that gives you a lot of information in in different branches but especially in terms of the engineering maybe mechanical engineering students must have come across the, this situation already similarly you can see in electrical circuits also um, you can see that there is an example problem that i have given okay in order to find uh, here okay um the current so this problem is uh, in terms of the second order differential equation and subjected to the initial conditions okay these are the initial value problems that you come across some of the examples that you must have seen already okay and boundary value problems those are very very important because lot of times you must be working on a, especially in engineering you must be working on a different boundaries different types of boundaries and also i'm i'm sure that you have learned uh, a theoretical aspects of boundary value problems boundary value problems behave very differently from in initial value problems initial value problems previously what i i said here okay once these functions behaves nicely means the coefficients functions p not p1 p2 and rt if those are continuous and it guarantees the uniqueness here but in terms of the boundary value problems they behave completely so don't expect the okay uh, a unique solution all the time but here in terms of the boundary value problems you come across several situations that your solution must be is uh, um, infinitely many solutions but generated by a function of one set of function say for example you have a c1 times uh, constant multiple of cos x that means every constant gives you a solution sometimes okay uh, these boundary value problems gives you a solution in terms of uh, an infinite solution but it is those in that infinite solution is generated because of the two functions which is like uh, a cos x plus b sin x so those are all you know you must be seeing boundary value problems are very different okay you will get different cases zero solutions unique solutions infinitely many solutions so the theory of understanding boundary value problems completely different from initial value problems that is where you need your mathematical knowledge okay so boundary value problems you will be seeing in several occasions okay and um, particularly you must be seeing boundary value problems in terms of some parameters are involved if you remember okay those uh, okay um, so i'll i'll just be spending little time here okay you can see this is only i can i gave you linear boundary value problem here okay 
and um, i have considered here p not p1 p2 rx are continuous that in and when alpha and beta are also finite that gives you a singular boundary value problem um, so that gives you um uh inuk solution but whenever you have a uh, alpha and beta alpha and beta those are not finite you will get a singular problem okay so that is very very essential to understand here um these if these functions are also not continuous your theory is going to completely change okay if there are not the, here is those are continuous and uh, interval is finite okay those are uh, um non singular but you have a singular boundary value problems that theory is also different there in in reality you will be seeing okay here when rx equal to 0 and uh, L, uh, here the right hand side is 0 so you will be calling it as a homogeneous boundary value problem so in order to say a problem is homogeneous it is homogeneous not only in the equation but also in terms of the boundary conditions also it has to be homogeneous that is called homogeneous boundary value problem so theoretical aspects are very important i'm hoping that you will revise later and also in terms of the boundary conditions you must have come across several boundary conditions so far the first boundary conditions existed in the literature was given by dirichlet so those are called dirichlet conditions you can see if the values are given at the um, alpha is the first point and beta is the right end okay and real line so if you know the um, function at the end points those are called dirichlet conditions so here newman conditions if the derivatives are given and you will call them as the newman conditions similarly mixed boundary conditions you will be ha having the functions one at an uh, function at given at one value and here is the derivative is given those are called mixed boundary conditions okay the other conditions you can see basically in the previously i consider the condition if you see it's a generalized condition here my first boundary condition involves y at alpha which is this value y dash at alpha okay the same thing at a, a derivative at the same value and uh, y at beta y dash at beta so you you have seen that you know it is the combination you know of the derivatives and also the end points you can see that okay but here this type is separated simply alpha conditions are separated from beta conditions these are called separated boundary conditions so you come across in several of the engineering problems these separated boundary conditions why because especially when you are assuming your solutions in terms of time or sometimes you will be assuming that your terms t terms which is the time terms are separated from the okay uh, in terms of the dimension terms so you must be seeing the separated boundary conditions very often in your study so these are called separated boundary conditions so there is also periodic boundary conditions okay so these are the boundary value problems and uh, even the complicated boundary conditions you must be having okay so those problems as i said the theory is different from the initial value problems one must understand the have the knowledge of theoretical aspects of the boundary value problem okay in when you are solving the boundary value problems you will see special problems in engineering so many problems okay maybe as i said in the previously a simple pendulum problem you must be seeing your equation in terms of uh, some arbitrary parameter i'm sure that you must have seen differential equations with alpha you see that here in this alpha i gave a generalized model but simple y double dash plus lambda equal lambda y equal to 0 you must have seen those problems okay so like how you see eigen values the eigen value problem are uh, properties are similar to what you see in eigen value in matrices that's why the name given eigen values here so that is a lot of you know theoretical aspects one has to understand here okay so here you can see here it's um 
uh, some differential equations that involves arbitrary parameter and those problems we call it as eigen value problem subjected to some condition a storm lovely boundary value problem is a particular boundary value problem it is in this form of you can see some conditions given okay um you it is easy you know, for our convenience only we wrote this equation through some techniques okay if you apply some uh, integrating factor any second order differential equations you can convert into this form this form is not not at all difficult to write it in this form by multiplying with an integrating factor you can write uh, a given differential equation into this form so um, basically you expect that you have a second derivative if you expand this you will be expecting px y double dash plus px dash y dash right so you have a second order differential equation and you have a lambda you can see here so this lambda that is giving you an arbitrary parameter okay and here if you see the boundary conditions what i have given are they are separated okay the conditions um at uh, so here my end points are a and b you can see that so one end is a it has taken and other condition is at a b it has taken so these are called separated boundary conditions that's why i mentioned previously so this problem storm lively boundary problem is very essential and i i know by now you must have seen if not even the first years second years and third years must have seen such problems okay in solving different uh, situations the 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 problems come across in various models though whether we see it or not um um whether as a storm lovely boundary value problem we will be using the theoretical aspects so this is where even with the theory of the storm lovely boundary value problem so the generalized four year series also was der derived and um, that is what you are and also um when you have uh, functions when you are expressing as a orthogonal combination of the different functions that theory was also developed from this theory of uh, boundary value problems okay particularly here i was not considering any singular problems but you can see if these are continuous the theory is different p p dash q r and real valued continuous okay and um, um this one also please this should be also a and b okay a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b and uh, this should be also a and b so if for this, this these typos okay so these value these problems come across in real life not only the um, uh, as in the ordinary differential equations but in the partial differential equations also when you are solving the partial differential equations by method of separation of variables you must have come across this okay in terms of the alpha so that is very crucial okay you will be seeing them and without having the knowledge of these problems you will be okay uh, feeling uncomfortable maybe or something empty when you are dealing those problems especially it's a, a method of uh, separation of variables is a very strong method and solving partial differential equations especially in the field of engineering here several times we assume that uh, your time and um, dimensions you know space dimensions you, you see it as a functions that are separated so these are some of the very essential models that you will be come across and the theory is very very important okay i gave one example here just to see okay um buckling of an elastic column where you can express this problem in terms of a fourth order okay eigen value problem but though it is a fourth order but basically by suitable substitution one can reduce it to a second order problem okay so and then solve this problem and get back to the original solution so in this case what exactly in the eigen, eigen problem one would do is you need to find a solution that is a non zero solution for suitable value of lambda so the the value okay that gives the value of lambda that gives a non zero solution we call it as an eigen value and uh, the corresponding solution you call it as the eigen function 
and as i said in in all these problems okay if the function satisfies nicely here as i said okay these conditions okay these conditions you will be seeing that your eigen values are infinitely many and your eigen functions are also based on there is a beautiful theory which i am not spending much time here so eigen values are infinitely many again i am repeating therefore you will be having alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n and even they have a in an increasing order so if they satisfy some a structure and also your eigen functions that is are infinitely many based on how you see corresponding each lambda there exists a solution and uh, corresponding two different lambdas these solutions are linearly independent therefore you will be forming a set of infinitely many solutions not only these solutions are linearly independent and that also orthogonal solutions so that we a lot of orthogonal properties and uh, fourier series expansion was also derived so there is a beautiful subject you have to read same book you know you have that information which i have given here okay so you can go to this book elementary differential equations and boundary value problems i'm seeing that mostly everybody must be using now even in engineering problems okay um so these are the term lively boundary value problems and as i said you will be seeing in these problems eigen values and eigen functions so your solution is expressed in terms of uh, okay each lambda there is a solution so that is what you will be come across and this is something you will be here seeing the some examples okay and now um so we have seen some examples which in terms of initial value problems and also in terms of the boundary value problem but when it comes to the excuse me, when it comes to partial differential equations you will be come across more than um space dimensions are more than one variable you will be seeing the your unknown is the function of more than one variable two independent variables are three four based on the dimensions you can start here is uh, some models which i have not given the all the derivations but also i am uh, uh giving you some examples where you can see in real in real life where you are using okay these models but did you come across these models i'm sure okay um so in the, the this is a wave equation that represents here let us uh, see this one uh, um i'm not sure everybody has come across this equation already but you have a let us assume that you have a string that is uh, fixed at both ends okay and you have a string that is fixed so that you just uh, uh, pull the st string and what happens it starts vibrating okay so that the motion of that uh, string that is the displacement u here with respect to x okay uh, the displacement is given u and uh, with respect to x that is the space in terms of the length and the time in terms of the time so here u is a function of t and x so this is an uh, the process is described with the help of this equation here you can see this is called um wave equation okay it c depends upon the material that you are using so this describes the phenomenon i gave here only the um one dimensional equation but similarly if you are having a two dimensional suppose instead of have a string if you have a membrane you can see the model changes and also please try to observe that okay when you are modeling you have to consider several situations including in terms of the mathematical model you should be um considering the geometry right so geometry is very 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 important because when you are considering here um a string or a bar i will be using these equations but when i am considering uh, in terms of the um membrane or when i am considering in terms of the material that is not in the shape of this so i need to completely change my equations in terms of the other cartesian coordinate so you will be especially in uh, uh, engineering problems you will be seeing pipe flows okay 
and also flow through passing through the uh, any sphere spherical shapes and all so you must be come across a lot of these uh, okay coordinate systems also cylindrical spherical even elliptical all you must be seeing so you you must be doing a lot, lot more than what i am saying here okay uh, in these equations see here i gave the general equation but in order to solve this equation you expect that you needed how many conditions four conditions because in terms of t you need two conditions here in terms of x you need uh, two conditions so in terms of t we you will expect that you will have the initial condition those are called in terms of x because of the dimension normally we call it as a boundary condition so you will be having initial boundary value problem so you expected that based on your uh, conditions how it is given even the method of solution changes okay certain times you may be you might have already seen that solving is by separation separation of variables but you have a finite domain nicely but if it is infinite domain you must be seeing the solution okay approach is different which is very very important to understand so these problems you will be seeing what i said exactly the vibrating sting problems come across in several situations where you can see okay um supersonic air flows sound waves in a tube or pipe longitudinal vibrations of a bar okay torsional oscillations of a rod you will be seeing even in the membranes you know you will be seeing in in uh, biomedical engineering you will be seeing okay the vibrations of the membranes also calculated with the help of these uh, models okay and the several situations you will see and not only that um, there is a beauty of this model uh, these models why i have focused here is um, especially when it comes to second order partial differential equations so you classify them hyperbolic elliptic and parabolic i'm i'm sure a lot of people have the knowledge most of the problems most of the second order equations when you reduce them using suitable transformations it will be reduced to either of these forms means either in the form of wave equation or in the form of heat equation or in the form of laplace equation so that's why we spend a lot of time on giving a lot of information when you are especially modeling true differential equations so several uh, maybe the months are years spending on giving lot of information on the wave and heat and laplace because any second order equation with the constant coefficients by suitable transformation one can reduce that to to a canonical form those canonical forms reduce to these forms wave which is the um, wave form okay next one is i'm going to show heat and the another one is laplace so you can see in every hyperbolic form when you reduce to canonical form you come across into a form like this okay um so heat equation which is very very uh, important equation as i said if you have any parabolic equation with constant coefficients okay you will be seeing a canonical form like this which which you see this okay and several of the problems here okay come across in real life uh, that can be modeled with the help of this equation so having a knowledge of this equation how do you solve this so gives you lot of information okay um this is our equation here also i have not given any initial and boundary conditions this is a beautiful model which you must be seen um there must be several methods you might you might have applied so far um so maybe method of separation of variables even when you have a finite domain method of separation if it is a real line positive real line laplace transforms you might have used if you have infinite domain minus infinity to infinity the complete uh, domain you might have used a fourier series okay so you must have seen several of those problem solving but because here a, you have um, your unknown which is u okay what exactly it represents is suppose you have a you, you can assume that you have a rod here okay and based on the condition suppose okay your rod was heated already it was hot and then you are observing after time with respect to time so the distribution of the temperature you are observing basically with respect to axially and also with time okay that gives you the temperature in this rod but you know this equation uh, chemical engineers must have seen already in terms of the 
um, diffusion equation. Am I right? So the diffusion equation also basically okay. Um, it it represents the natural diffusion process. See, you this is the natural diffusion process. Suppose you have something sprayed here, and uh, this model is a one-dimensional model. Let us assume that I am considering in only one dimension. You sprayed here, so you are observing that the concentration of the whatever the spray, which is the okay um, concentration, changes with the time with respect to direction. This represented by this. We did several of these problems, which I am going to uh, focus in. Advanced models. I'll give uh, explain a bit, but see this equation represents in reality several situations. For example, as I said, heat conduction and diffusion, and uh, okay, several of the situations. Okay, so conduction of heat in bars and solids, diffusion of concentration of liquid at gaseous substance in physical chemistry, diffusion of neutrons in it, okay, atomic piles, diffusion of vorticity. You must be seeing this equation in several problems, okay, in engineering and in, okay, mostly um, a lot of engineering examples one can give, okay. Subjected to the boundary conditions and also, as I said, when you are discussing about the um, geometry and these equations must be same changing, and the, because of the dimension, if it is a three-dimensional equation, I must be having. Here, u x s replacing u x x with u x x plus u y y, u z z. You know all that. So you will be seeing. So these are some of the models that you will come across in terms of differential equations. There is another one which I said previously. This is called Laplace equation. Laplace equation basically represents the heat equation, but with the steady conditions. If you see this one, if a steady state u of t equal to zero. So therefore, u x x plus u y y. This is a two-dimensional heat equation in steady state. Okay, so you'll be also seeing Poisson's equations, which is in the form of these have a lot of examples: <coughs> steady state temperature, um, steady state electric field, uh, inviscid fluid flow, and gravitational field. So you must be seeing a lot of uh, these problems. um so as i said the importance of these problems not limited what i said if you come across second order equations with constant coefficients through some form or other or through some substitutions you can reduce those equations which you can see in these form so that you solve those forms and going back to original solutions that is an advantage of knowing and understanding these problems and also there is a lot of theory one has to understand about the existence of the solutions and all okay um so in the mathematical models that i have so far mentioned you saw simple problems right maybe if i have one dimensional problems i know how to solve now but if my complexity is more and more when i am going to model um a real life problem suppose if i have a company and i am um, trying to just generate you know so i i wanted to start a production company i wanted to organize and uh, produce and also sell like say 100 uh, products so my model will be having 100 parameters 100 variables and all see in order to have such a setup i am unable to do my own in terms of pen and paper one must be needed to take the help of something okay so when such models are involved complex models are involved you know that numerical methods are very helpful but not only um so the numerical method is helping us but right now because of the present advancement in the uh, computers you know that uh, how faster we can <coughs> solve a problem so that makes us our life very easy and to solve complex problems in terms of a computer so the running time is very less nowadays therefore we take the aid of computer to solve the numerical um, uh, method so numerical methods are very essential in engineering i'm sure you have a special course i know you must be doing that that is the um, beauty of those uh, techniques to solve in engineering 
not only to solve a complex problems you know in engineering what do what do we do other than the numerical methods simply instead of finding a solution what we do is we also construct a prototype examples that is what the simulation comes here you simulate them okay so you solve the problem with a simple model and uh, on computer you simulate it to a a large scale problem that is where your numerical method comes and also numerical methods uh, what we do is we compare the solutions that you have already got through mathematical problems mathematical method of solution or otherwise experimental solution you compare with the, a particular numerical method if it works well you are satisfied then what you do you will be going through and you are applying and extending that method and then solving in a bigger scale and so you design new models design new systems that's what you do so some of the very common methods you know okay especially in solving differential equations i have mentioned but there are other methods you know even you know you are going nowadays to solve a complex integration is involved you will be using numerical methods um differentiation integration um finding a root i think all we are going for help of uh, numerical technique and that is where you will be solving the problem so um finite difference finite element finite volume these are the methods which you are seeing uh, different branches are seeing i'm seeing that you know finite element i'm sure mechanical they were doing and even uh, aeronautical engineering they must be working on lot of models with the um boundaries different boundaries okay finite volume methods also so these are uh, advantage of numerical methods one must have to have a strong background in numerical methods when you are uh, uh, doing your engineering so i think i spent lot of time on some of the models that you have uh, seen and uh, some of the models that you have been working i'm i'm assuming that you reached this stage where you know all these models priorly so so you have seen the importance of mathematical models in engineering and also you will be seeing some of the uh, examples where you come across the mathematical models and as also you saw you i think realized appreciate the importance of the having mathematical analysis background in modeling because knowledge is very important okay uh, in understanding and the behavior of the solutions so mathematical analysis very important existence and uniqueness solutions are very important so that uh, to give you and to extend that situation okay to on a large scale so i think now i have some more uh, advanced models that we have been working okay and maybe i may be focusing on biomedical engineering but you may be seeing these models can be applied in real life in environment uh, and also chemical engineering several applications are there especially because of uh, i wanted to see and appreciate uh, how much extent these models are extended in literature uh, especially in terms of uh, applying in real life so that i i i i was thinking you will see the importance so that you are you appreciate the mathematics i'm going to show some of the models that we did but i may i might have not given lot of mathematical analysis here but i'll see depending upon the time maybe i'll go through one one example where the complete details of the mathematics i'll give so that you can see which how much level of mathematics that we have been using okay so some advanced models in biomedical engineering these are the some of the models that we have been using and we have been working and you can see you know several of those papers okay online so that you can also appreciate further details okay i am going to go for some of the mathematical models in biomedical engineering but just i wanted to indicate some um, concepts so that you will understand basically here what we do through these models is so we will come up we will model a situation suppose for example say a situation that uh, um that describes the property 
and uh, that describe the phenomenon in the human body say for example it could be the oxygen transport or it could be the urine transport anything so any situation in order to model these situations you, you are going to see that the importance of uh, uh, both mathematical skills and also fluid dynamics concepts here we are using several of the fluid dynamics concepts combination of math mathematical models in order to model the situations and uh, in reality in engineering you may be seeing okay um modeling the situations similar way in uh, in engineering problems but when it comes to biomechanical engineering especially when you are modeling the physiological flows or physiological situations which is the situations that are in the human body okay there is a lot of factors one has to consider so that is why i am going to give you a little information here what exactly we will be doing so when you are situation in a model let us see okay here the circulatory system when we are studying the blood flow in a human body and your idea is to measure the amount of flow in the body in certain uh, location which is the artery arterial or something so here you can see that uh, according to this picture in the human body you will be seeing that there is a uh, these uh, vessels or arteries are very um, um you can see that so the geometry is very very complicated there will be the different size of the vessels and there could they, you can also see there is a branching there is a curve curve nature and all those are involved so that is very very essential to understand okay while modeling through okay all these biomedical uh, problems what we do here also means after doing after modeling what we do as you know that the knowledge we gain here from this we use it as a theoretical analysis in applying to the medical treatment whether it could be the invention of a new um equipment say for example you must be seeing oxygenators are nowadays you will be seeing kidney dialysis machine you are seeing all these are not simply because of the experimental work there is a lot of mathematical models are involved even you know in angiograms angioplasty so there is a lot of mathematical people are working with the doctors so that in order to develop a, a particular type of catheter which is suitable for the situation the length um, width and depending upon the size so there is a lot of work is going on behind what we see here so there is a lot of role of mathematicians in constructing and in coming up with this uh, equipment so therefore you can see when you are modeling okay uh, through uh, certain physiological situation say in the body so it's a very very important to consider these aspects so here the cardiovascular system you can see that it consists of the heart blood and blood vessels and it is all it's responsible for oxygen transport okay all this you will be seeing there is so much goes on you take the food you take the oxygen and also there could be some pathological situation means it's not normal okay so somebody may be sick it is not acting how it has to act these things has to be assessed and there are several models that gives you a beautiful information about uh, okay theoretical aspects you can review some of those papers and uh, which was referred in biomedical textbooks where you can see or can nicely explain the theory that is what uh, we have obtained here are used in the theory of those biomedical engineering books okay um so you will be seeing here okay the, as i said heart blood and blood vessels so what is the purpose of the heart you see it pumps the blood and again you know it collects the blood but at the same time and even the blood vessels you see blood vessels also having uh, different sizes and also it has another factors that has to be consider there is a branching curving all this is are involved so while modeling one has to consider all this the geometry is important 
Okay, so these are some of the aspects one has to be considered in mathematical model. Okay, so blood, as I said, it's simple, not like a regular water, you see, means it's not uh, continuously you'll be seeing as a one, uh, how do you say, not a uh, one form, means it has uh, some suspended elements are there in the blood, okay? So there you can realize that it is not uh, always, we consider it as a fluid that has a Newtonian property, you know, Newtonian, non-Newtonian, I'm sure. Okay, so, but uh, based on the suspended elements, blood has to be treated differently, okay, depending upon the situation. Several non-Newtonian models one can see in the literature, several of the models came, but all these years, okay, we have um, strict to our studies to Kesan model, where blood has uh, poses some yield stress. That means this is the minimum force is required to make the fluid to flow. So, so we concentrated on that. So because of these suspended particles, blood is not to be treated as a Newton in all the cases, but one has to consider the non-Newtonian properties of the blood. Okay, here also, as I said, blood vessels, one has to consider depending upon the size and okay, one has to consider the models that are suitable to them and the, and the assumptions one has to make. Okay, so as I said, when it comes to some models in engineering and when it comes to models in um, biomedical engineering, so you may be seeing here, it certain things has to be considered, as I said, you need to consider the <coughs> curvature branches and not only that, uh, blood vessels has a property sometimes because of the elastic property, they behave differently and uh, even there is a property called the peristalsis, which I'll, I'll show you later. So even because of the nature of the property, sometimes whatever you take into your body, it was as it is pushed by the vessels because of the nature. So those are one has to be considered. And also because of the pumping of the heart, one must be consider the time dependency also. And uh, even the heart goes as a pulses, okay, goes as a pulse like pulse. So you can see pulsatility also very essential to consider, okay. So therefore in engineering, biomedical engineering, you will be come across, okay, several models that you will be seeing. But uh, while modeling, one has to consider the geometry and the model and the area. So these are very, very essential in modeling. Excuse me. Okay, um, as I said, when we were discussing about the blood, as you see, blood is a suspension of, uh, okay, um, elements, so in plasma, and if you consider the pure plasma, so that can be considered as a Newtonian, but in terms of the elements suspended, one has to consider the non-Newtonian nature, there are several, you know, uh, non-Newtonian fluids in the literature. Okay, there are right now I'm seeing so many came up. Okay, I have given only several of the examples here, some of the examples here. So um, when it comes to Newtonian, there is a relationship, you know, when you apply the force and how that is a change of the position. Okay, so when you are in that those fields, either mechanical or biomedical. Um, um, maybe aeronautical engineering students also must be seeing these models. Okay, uh, when it uh, comes to non-Newtonian, there is a Bingham fluid. It has the property where you can see some extra term came here. So this is called yield stress. And only when the force that you apply more than the yield stress, then this form, otherwise the velocity gradient is zero. So power law fluid satisfies. So if you see the difference here and here, mu, the viscosity here, which is Newtonian viscosity, is a constant in this case, linear, but in this case, it's not constant. It is a function of the elastic gradient, which is called strain rate, okay? So one has to consider um, based on the 
um, based on the area you will be considering and the vessel you are considering. So one has to go and consider this, these models. So as I said, while modeling these fluids in biomedical engineering, so we will be using the combination of the theory of the principles of fluid dynamics and also okay, mathematical tools. So one of the several principles that we will be using okay, uh, here, mostly you will be come across okay, um, equation of continuity, which is the conservation of mass. You know that the rate at which the fluid entering into a region is equal to the rate at which the fluid mass. So basically you can see this form. And you will come across while solving these problems, you will be solving the fluid that is in flowing. Okay, so satisfying these equations, which is the equation of continuity. And um, the equation of continuity, if it is an incompressible fluid, you will be having, you know, rho, rho by rho t equals zero. So that your equations in Cartesian coordinate, you will be seeing this. And in polar, co in cylindrical coordinates, you will be seeing this. Okay, so you come across these equations. Okay, now you have a, another set of equations you will be seeing here. So those are called momentum equations or equation of motion. So based on this, the basic principle that uh, gives you these equations is the Newton's law. So the forces that you are applied equal to m times the acceleration. So when you apply these, this, okay, the forces that you are applying and you will be getting uh, different equations here. So these are the equations that will be, you will be seeing. So these are the um, forces that I have shown previously. These relationships are given previously depending upon the Newtonian, non-Newtonian, this tau shear stress, you will be applying those forms. And in, in combination with the um, equation of continuity, you will be solving the equation of motion too. So, but uh, subjected to the boundary and initial. When the time dependency is there, your initial come into picture. Otherwise, boundary conditions come into picture. Solving these equations, you see, it's not so easy. Okay, still solving... Uh, um, if you if you see the if you just browse some of the unsolved problems, non okay Navier-Stokes equations also is still an unsolved problem in three dimension. There will be a lot of you know fund was even given for those to solve. You can just Google it and see. Okay. Um, in terms of the cylindrical polar, polar coordinates. So you will be seeing these equations. Sorry, here also should be do, do u by do t. I'm seeing there is a typo here also. And do, do v by do t, do w. Okay, in terms of uh, here, u is a function, which is the um, uh, u in terms of the earth component, right? Yeah. So axial velocity, these are in terms of the functions. So here r, theta, and z, so, and also time, okay? So this is, these are in terms of the polar coordinates. Okay. So basically, okay, in order to solve and how to use them in reality, you can see that in reality, what it is said that, okay, so the conservation principles are used in some or other form for most problems in fluid dynamics. Some forces are absent based on that body forces are absent. See, you can neglect these terms. You will be solving. But depending upon the situations, you see certain initial boundary conditions on the surface, which, which the fluid may be contact or conditions which may hold at very large distance. From so therefore, so these are very, very important. The common condition, which we call it as no-slip condition, which is the, especially when... Uh, uh, what is a no slip condition is when the fluid is attached to a, a wall that is stable, so therefore the velocity is zero, that is something which we consider. And uh, those previous equations that the government governs you are gives you in order to find uh, the velocity of a fluid. But suppose when there is a concentration gradients are involved 
in the in your model okay so you need uh, some of those uh, um laws that uh, governs the, those situations the basic uh, um law that we have we use and generate these equations are given by fix so this must you must have seen okay in chemistry or chemical engineering so where when you have relates the diffusion flux to the concentration field so the flux is directly proportional to the change of the concentration and here d is the diffusivity coefficient this diffusivity coefficient once you kept the temperature constant it is a constant but you can see okay this equation which describes the flux but uh, when it comes to the um second law it predicts how diffusion causes the concentration change with time so it change it gives you the rate of change of the concentration with the time so this is modified now you will be seeing do square c by do x square see this is exactly the equation that i have shown you when i am discussing the heat equation am i right so this one is a one dimensional but in terms of the cylindrical coordinates so these equations are very essential when you are studying if there is a mass transport is involved previous one the momentum transport is involved and here is a mass transport is involved these equations okay governs the situation and we will be solving our models in terms of these equations so when you have a rectangular coordinates i extended this to three dimensions and this is the coordinates in this is the equation in cylindrical coordinates so you can see based on the model you will be seeing these equations okay so several of those problems which we did was considering several situations in the human body and some of the models i'm going to show you maybe i'll explain here what are the models we did and what is very important thing here what what do we get from these models so that that can be used into the future analysis and predictions of the some physiological situations several models we worked on that um blood through stenosed arteries you know that nowadays it is very common you see that a lot of people okay are going for um angioplasty and they had angiogram and they or oh, they have a stroke all this we have been observing and okay heart attacks and all see what happens in a uh, in a and in a flow sometimes the fat elements are going to deposit in certain areas especially you can see here in arteries so slowly it start uh, okay reducing the gap here but at one point in time it's going to block the block the situation so so once it is completely blocked what happens so it obstruct the flow completely it obstruct the flow that is where okay the balloon angioplasty is used in medical situations where they send a balloon and they use the pressure pump here and they push the pressure pump so that it slowly slowly okay blast here and then so that it forms a gap so you can read those books okay here this is a situation where okay the deposition of some plaque so that it is obstructing the flow and also here because of that and there is a clot also formed so these are certain very important aspects to deal um through modeling because every situation to study experimentally is not easy you know that especially testing on a, a human body sometimes is very not easy and people test on different animals and different data that is how we come across with the different uh, um interpretations okay so here what happens so one wants to study okay what is the blood flow that is the amount of flow that is flowing through if the blood is not flowing the amount that is required so that you will get all the issues right so that is very important not only in the stenosis cases okay it's very important to assess the wall okay it's wall stress here so that 
if it is a wall stress is more and more it ruptures the entire wall so that is very essential to know the impact of these uh, okay the stenotic region effects on not only on the flow but also on the wall a uh, wall shear stress okay so the i'm going to give the mathematical models that discuss this situation so that you can see okay how the beauty of mathematics that we use in this model there is as i said in mathematical modeling we have several assumptions to be made okay so the models that the assumption here is we assume the flow is incompressible okay laminar so fully developed axis symmetric unsteady okay so what i did as a we modeled the as a cassan fluid model so basically because of the flow that is flowing in an artery okay um, we are assuming that is a cassan fluid which is an anatonin fluid nature unsteady because of the heart pumping so you know that the pressure uh, the velocity with respect to time cannot be steady so it should be unsteady so in this model you may not be axis symmetric all the time particularly in this model so we are considering the fluid is with the central line it is symmetric both sides fully developed you know that what is a fully developed so when the fluid is entering suddenly into for example a pipe okay at the entrance there should be lot of disturbances okay that is not considered so those entrance effects are neglected so that you know all those neglected here in this case particularly in this case fluid is a in the direction of only in this direction say for example axial direction okay laminar as i said at the entrance there could be several you know turbulence are there all those those are neglected so fluid is also assumed incompressible okay in such case okay this is the geometry and um, there is another assumption we made here here the um stenosis is nicely axially okay distributed in the cosine form this is the form we have considered but you know see in literature now this was uh, this work i think we consider long time ago but right now you will be seeing in literature there are several forms are considered irregular bond stenosed uh, um regions are considered okay symmetry um is uh, neglected so there are different forms you can see in the literature okay so here we consider even there is a symmetry of the stenotic region so the length the height of the stenotic region the maximum height is 2 delta it is considered so basically it may not be easy for you to grasp it at you know a fraction of second but you can read and understand later but you can see the beauty of the models and at the same time you can see the mathematics that we are using and also the assumptions we are making so that you can see the steps of okay modeling that i have explained you previously so therefore we know the model what you wanted to do so you wanted to find the velocity okay in a stenosed uh, artery and you are seeing that you are using cylindrical coordinate system here and uh, you have a, a region was prescribed the wall is prescribed here and in order to consider the flow when you are considering only flow so the momentum change is there for that you will be using equation of continuity and equation of motion subjected to all the assumptions okay you have a uh, all those equations previously that i have shown but when i apply all those my conditions now i had a simple form here okay so though it looks simple but it's complicated in terms of cassan fluid are you seeing that because my tau okay in cassan fluid has a non linear relationship so that means my non linear equation comes here so the non linear equation with the time dependency and uh, okay in terms of r it's difficult to solve analytically so what we have done i'm not sure if i'll get time to go through those models but what we have done was uh we have applied uh, some perturbation techniques here so basically you know uh, it's very common in engineering lot of problems we go for in terms of the series solution by knowing the solution for either steady case or some special cases with respect to that solution we 
we apply the solutions in terms of some parameters, in terms of a city solution with respect to a particular parameter. It's very common. You must have seen perturbation methods, okay? Otherwise, also, you can note that and read, okay? So perturbation techniques are very, very important in solving engineering problems. So we use the perturbation method. And uh, here, in this case, the flow is completely due to the pressure gradient that is supplied here, so in the axial direction. So um, the form of the pressure gradient was assumed so that in, in this equation are uh, amicable to solve analytically. So this is the no-slip condition that I have explained previously. So by considering the no-slip condition, and we solve this equation, which you can see in the published papers. You just you can just Google it, you know, my name and Google Scholar so that you can see all those papers, okay? So the full details of the problem and uh, solutions how do. Okay, so the, that is how, okay, one can find uh, and uh, evaluate the expressions for you. Not only that, wall shear stress also can be found so that uh, we analyze. But there are several situations. I gave a simple situation here, but it is very common you see a situation when you have a stenosis, there could be a clot is formed. There are the models in the literature where you can see stenosis with clots are there and different geometries are involved. And also stenosis, including the okay, catheter is involved, that those are also models very essential to understand the flow in terms of okay, when you are dealing with the situations in physiology. Okay, now I'm going to show here another model. What we have done here is, okay, this is a simple model that also studying the flow in a catheterized artery. Okay, mathematically what you are doing here, you can see here. So basically you are studying the flow in some artery, okay, but uh, you have inserted a catheter in the artery, you see that. Okay, when you insert a catheter, your idea is to study the flow in the annular region. Okay, so in the annular region here. Now, instead of a tube problem that you have studied, now it becomes a annular problem. So, your annular region comes. Now, you are solving the similar governing equation subject to the boundary conditions that you have assumed. Here, my radius of the... Um, here, the artery is, we have considered A, so that uh, catheter is a KA. So you will be studying here what is the flow. And not only that, when you insert a catheter, there are a lot of fluid dynamic properties are going to disturb, such as, you know, there could be friction on the wall, and it is very essential to measure. And also, it is... In several of the uh, biomedical problems or uh, physiological situations, in order to collect the blood samples, so doctors use the catheter and collect the blood samples and test it. So one has to understand whether the pressure and other hemodynamic properties are the same when the situation to a catheterized situation to a non-catheterized situation. These are also very, very important. And also, you will be seeing a lot on this when you are studying. It is very essential to see the size of the catheter, how it is affecting, and also different shapes of the catheter. A lot of studies were uh, existed, existing in the literature. You have to read it. Okay. Basically, now, our situation is you are studying the flow in this annulus because of the catheter insertion made this as annular flow. And uh, we made several assumptions. I'm considering the same assumptions that I have given previously, except there is no catheter, uh, there is no stenosis in this case, but other, other situations I have considered. So you can see those equations. In this case, also, we are considering the catheterized artery. Okay. And... Uh, here, the tau, which is a shear stress, because I'm, we are considering the most of these models we treated as a Cassan fluid. You can see those papers. But even without Newtonian cases also, there are a lot of 
uh, models and you can see in the literature okay this is a model again but he, he, here it is also not easy because of the non linearity and annulus region is there so uh, one can see some analytical techniques are used but with the help of the perturbation analysis but one can go numerically also there are several numerical methods also are exist in the literature one can see how to solve them okay yes this was the situation i have explained previously peristalsis this is you see it's a particular type of transport that you must be seeing in even in your labs you must be using peristaltic pumps you now in order to pump you know fluids in an experiments you know the amount of fluid if you want to okay um pump are use it so these are the pumps that you will be using even in chemical labs also i'm seeing okay but what what happens here is uh, by nature because the particularly the walls have a, a wave like displacement and here as this the fluid is pushed by the wall so those particular type of um, transport we call it as a peristaltic transport and this is very common you will be seeing in several of uh, biomedical applications you see the kidney dialysis machine this is used and there is other uh, um another phenomenon here you can see several of this phenomenon that use this type of transport but you see yeah in the, in reality maybe if you um just uh, click it or uh, google it now later you can see how this peristaltic pump works okay so and you can see the nature of the peristalsis and also you can see the peristaltic transport the bolus on uh, entering into the also for us you can see when your food is taken here how it is transported due to the nature of the walls these are some of the examples of this particular type where you can see even the wall itself pushes the okay the fluid as it is like a solid body most like a wheel okay in terms of the mathematical model you can see okay this is also i must have given the paper but you can just google it peristaltic transport in gasan fluids and you can see the mathematical model similar uh, assumptions were made but basically here the wave wow the wall has the wave nature you can see so this is what you have h1 and this should be the h2 okay this should be the h2 so sorry for this typo and here the upper wall is h1 the lower wall is h2 and those two have a wall nature and uh, here also similar assumptions made and you have the same equation but you are why and uh, has a, okay these forms and your conditions are changed are you seeing that same equation depending upon the conditions that we have it's continuously you know your form of solution is changed your mode of uh, method of uh, solution is also changed so one can solve this problem but in these problems understanding the um, volume flow rate which is the amount of fluid that is uh, that is you collected over a particular uh, time it's very important even the pressure gradient you measure is very very important so that is what we do normally in this cases okay so there are some of the several problems we dealt okay you can see you can find those problems not only in terms of uh, uh, moment transport there are mass transport is involved as i said previously the basic uh, principle that govern uh, governs this these models is fick's law fick's second law you can see and um, the fick's second law when you apply that uh, in the in the fixed second law maybe i didn't explain you know the full details of this equation but the fixed law you will see in the only diffusion equation but you have a convection equation here so that means uh, there is a diffusion but at the same time as i said a convection is involved that means suppose you are spraying something but i i put a fan here therefore the concentration changes not only by nature of the molecular gradients but also due to the 
flow i have supplied so the convection comes here okay so therefore the equations that you see are modified and you will be seeing but uh, here i have consider several assumptions are made and my fluid is a unidirectional flow my flow that's why i have only w term otherwise i should have have a u term v term okay as i see so therefore what is the situation now you are dealing now here is there are several models that we did okay in uh, in field, uh, in human body so we continuously take uh, oxygen or uh, we continuously take some food so we need to understand the concentration of the okay the food that you are taking or the medication that you are taking therefore it is very very essential to find the concentration at some point in the blood stream so this model represents and describes the model that in order to discuss the concentration um gradients are in order to calculate the concentration in a particular region and these models you'll see not only what i'm i'm saying in biomedical engineering but i must have extended this model to any situations like in the reality the pollute transport which is the in environment there are a lot of models that are described the concentration of pollutants in the air in the water in the river there are a lot of uh, okay models you in lot of models you must have seen or you will be seeing these equations it depending upon the okay situation if it is depending upon the suppose this this can also be used in calculating the pollutants that is coming from the uh, industrial pipe so if you assume that pipe is um, one directional so based on that you will be seeing and it is the type of the um, point source models you will you read lot of problems okay these models are used in environment in chemical engineering for the mixing of the okay um uh, for mixing of the various uh, um, materials right so one can use uh, the solute in a solvent you can see all those models comes here okay so in this case okay this is a convection diffusion equation and that describes the local concentration of a solution as a function of okay longitudinal coordinate transfer coordinate and time okay this is the situation we consider and basically we wanted to use the find the concentration of say for example of a medication that is given for a particular region in the body so again you need to consider some boundary and initial conditions there are several boundary conditions initial conditions based on the situation has to be considered here this model particularly as considered in the form of you can see from z to zs by 2 for a particular length it is like a cnat like a tablet you know okay so a form of like a slug a tablet like form is inserted in the okay uh, at a time t0 so so that you are trying to observe how it is distributing with the time and both radially and axially by considering the axis symmetric flow okay so yes solving this problem is uh, again it's not so easy depending upon your w particularly in this case you can see okay here you have a um, equation you have a convection term is there <clears throat> and you have a radial term and the time dependency is there so solving these problems you will be seeing attracted lot of attention there are several methods were given in the um, uh, literature starting from taylor was the first one taylor okay and then there are several approaches was gi given gill and senker subramaniam and there are some numerical methods are given so depending upon some assumptions made one would go for solving these problems and this measures the situations and also the combination of what we have uh, seen the situations also we did lot of work Sup suppose you would like to find the concentration of uh, any solute in a catheterized artery in a stenosed artery several of these uh, models were combinations were used 
so you can see that in the literature so these are the some of the models that we have we have been doing okay i think now i'll give some uh, time for questions but i'll stop here if you have any okay. questions please let me know okay thank you madam thank you for your wonderful lecture on mathematical models in engineering So which uh, takes us in different dimensions thank you very much this is the time for question and answer session so because of uh, huge participants any participant Excellent. who is interested to clarify his or her doubts please come forward to post it only in the q and a box which is available on your uh, scroll bar uh, madam yes madam, yes sir Yeah. Uh, really wonderful madam uh, thank you for your nice presentation which enriches the knowledge of our students the presentation in which the way you presented introspected with a sufficient explanation on various models is marvelous no doubt madam our students are lucky today to get an overall idea on different mathematical models in multifarious engineering fields thank you ma'am thank you so much sir i would like to hear from at least from some students you know oh, definitely sorry <laughs> sir please suggest the students please come forward and uh, uh, i think ask uh, discuss with our madam so many hands okay. raised i saw 30 students raised their hands okay the students uh you please ask questions if you are any interested students please if you want to interact with madam please come forward and uh, put your question uh, madam will reply it anybody you can speak also now the yes, students we have enabled your audio so if you are interested to interact with yes, madam who is speaking yes, please say your name please yes, say your name आंसर बा okay madam they are not ready or not uh, asking the questions they may are they, they are in, uh, thinking maybe they were in first year no most of the students they were not okay. exposed that's okay sir they can send me an email i'm okay. very happy to help them explain them okay definitely ma'am uh, and i'm sure that i hope uh, i didn't go so fast so I, i try my best to you know <laughs> it is nice madam it is really nice <laughs> to help them to impress them the importance of maths yes ma'am definitely ma'am okay thank you thank if you there one. are yeah there are no questions thank you so much for inviting me it's my pleasure to be as i said it's always good to be with our people i'm so happy and uh, i'm looking forward any time to meet personally and uh, do take help or anything even to help projects or anything i'm very happy to extend my whatever in possible way thank you thank you madam okay. thank you one and all for your uh, good response and valuable support expecting the same cooperation for the remaining sessions also today's session concludes with vote of thanks 
by staff staff organizer sri ai potharaju madam they are showing their happiness with the claps i am seeing it sir i am seeing hey, good evening to all on behalf of the department of mathematics and the participants i would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our today's resource person dr b nagarani garu associate professor department of mathematics the university of uh, the west indies mona campus jamaica west indies who gave such a good and informative presentation on mathematical models in engineering despite of her busy work schedule she gladly accepted our invitation and gave a valuable talk in today's session thank you very much madam i would like to thank our beloved head of the department and convener of this international workshop dr kevil nacharlu sir who guided and supported us to do this program i would like to thank our principal sir and our management babatla education society for providing us all the facilities and encouraging us to conduct this program special thanks to dr p vijay sir the sir professor department of mathematics for his guidance and comparing today's program very well we are all thankful to sri k kiran kumar garu hod department of mca sri k sandeep sarvi garu department of cbds dr k mandeep garu department of csc babatla engineering college sri pav krishna rao garu department of it babatla engineering college sri a sai kishor garu and sri u venugopal garu for their timely technical support to us for making today's event a successful one thank you one and all Uh, madam thank you very much madam it's my pleasure thank you thank you thank you madam okay thank you all we will meet tomorrow so feedback link is shared in whatsapp groups all of you fill the feedback immediately okay thank you thank you sir ग्रूपेंगे